I'm Ben Weaver, and this is Lab 8. Interferometry is a useful field of optics that involves measuring and analyzing the superposition of waves that result from two or more wavefronts of light having some optical path difference. Typically, interferometry is done with coherent light sources such as lasers. Interference patterns can give useful information about an optical surface such as aberrations present within the system. Interferometers are the devices that are used for interferometry, and in this lab, particularly, we worked with the shear plate interferometer. Using a shear plate interferometer, we analyzed a few optics in this lab. There are two types of shear plate interferometers, wedged and non-wedged. In a shear plate, there are two reflected wavefronts that have an overlapping field in which fringes are available for collimating light passing through it. The shear is dependent on the refractive index of the flat, the thickness of the plate, and the incidence angle of the beams on the surface of the flat. This is an illustration that shows the wavefront difference in the first reflected wavefront and the sheared wavefront. As it is shown, there is only a portion of the two beams that overlap due to the shear distance s. The resulting phase changes across the wavefronts colliding with one another are recorded as light and dark fringes. Light and dark fringes indicate constructive and deconstructive interference respectively. This is the case in which a wedged shear plate is used. Note how the optical path difference is now dependent on an additional term, beta, which is our shear angle. Here we have the mathematical conditions in which bright and dark fringes occur for both the non-wedge and the wedged shear plate. The key here is that a shear plate interferometer measures the wavefront error difference function rather than the wavefront errors directly. Using this information, we can effectively solve for the magnitude of aberrations in a system given we know the wavefront difference and how each aberration contributes a certain type of wavefront error. This was done using the algorithm defined in Wine's notes with one-dimensional analysis of fringes. We began by constructing a beam expander with a spatial filter that consisted of a 0.4 NA microscope objective and a 20 micron pinhole. However, the spatial filter mount we were using had a very sticky micrometer which made it very difficult to align. During the tough alignment process, the mount slid down slightly causing the beam to be deviated and tilted throughout our system. A 250 millimeter focal length collimation lens was used to collimate the light and the non-wedged shear, shear plate was placed approximately at a 45 degree angle to view the fringe pattern. When a non-wedged shear plate is used to test for collimation, a null fringe will be seen on the interferogram. This is different from a wedged shear plate where, a, where horizontal fringes are seen when the beam is collimated. Due to our alignment issues, we were not able to achieve a null fringe, but we were able to get down to only two fringes due to some aberrations present in the system. Our results for the non-wedge shear plate are not the most accurate due to the spatial filter mount being broken. Nevertheless, um, for the best focus, we managed to get the minimum of two fringes that, when collimated. For the non-wedge shear plate, we found that the best focus to be at 457 nanometers or millimeters, and at this position, there is the same, um, some spherical aberration, which was typical with dealing with this lens. When we moved the lens back and forth um, to one millimeter in one increments of um, um, 0.5 millimeters in each, either direction to see how the defocus and center. We clearly see that the defocus is added. When we decenter the lens in the y direction, it became apparent that there, there's a phase shift. When we decenter in the x direction, there's no change, but due to the vibrations, it looks like it. By defocusing and decentering the lens, we can see the phase shift fringes. As expected, the phase shifting is only occurred in the same direction as the shear plate, um, which this is the case in the y direction. When we then flipped the lens um, and compared the new aberrations at the best focus and defocus and decenter, we were supposed to see um, this, but instead we saw this. When defocus, we expected to see the nodes, but we get this. Um, both can be attributed to the Next, we swapped aberration. setups in order to test len the lens aberrations by using a wedge shearing interferometer. A beam expander was constructed again, and a collimation lens was placed in the system. The best collimation location of the lens was determined by finding the location that the shear plate displayed horizontal fringes with the least amount of tilt in the fringe pattern. This time our shear was in the x-plane, so we expected to see phase shifts as we scanned through, through defocus in the x-direction. Switching to a wedge lens setup, we find that the best focus is at um, 337 millimeters. The only aberration that we can see exists at this point is spherical as aberration. As expected, we see a little bit of this at the best focus. We then defocus the lens at um, one millimeter in either direction as before, and these are the results. Next, we altered the setup by adding a 300 millimeter reference lens to focus the light onto a curved test mirror. We were then able to test the aberrations of the test mirror by placing the shear plate in between the reference and the collimation lenses in order to test the quality of the collimation coming back through the reference lens. Next, we added the second lens and the mirror and found the best focus. Once more, we saw that spherical aberration at this point. Um, we also moved the tilt of the mirror and the x direction and saw the phase shift similar to what we saw in the y direction for the non-wedge shear plate. We also did not see any difference in the y direction using this setup.